Hello everyone. Welcome to another episode of Friday PM. We're so happy that you joined us. And uh, wherever you're joining us from in the world, you are so very, very welcome. Uh, if you're new to Friday PM, great that you found us. And may the Lord bless you. And hopefully you can catch up with all the other episodes that's available to you, whether on podcasts or on video, uh, YouTube, Facebook, whatever uh, avenue and vehicle you're using. Uh, welcome and God richly bless you today. So stay glued to your seat uh, just for our time together and see what the Lord has in store for you. Well, today I'm with my wife, Charlene. It's just the two of us, Charlene. I know, it's special, Dan. <laughs> Have we done one, just you and I? I'm not sure. I, I don't I think so. I don't think so, so no. So uh, it's great to have my beautiful wife, Charlene, here. And we've been married for 14 years. And uh, we have a nine-year-old son called Ruben. And we just thought to share today a little bit about destiny because we're very passionate, aren't we? Yeah, about, absolutely. About the topic, about yeah. finding your destiny. Yeah. And it's so important that we found we find that purpose, that divine reason why God made you and I, and that we find that perfect purpose and His perfect will for our lives. So hopefully something that we share today can help you a little bit closer on that journey. And so we pray that the Lord will anoint and bless our time together today. Amen. Amen. Charlene, should I start with one scripture and then we'll yeah, take it from there? Absolutely. So I'm going to read from Acts 20 verse 24 and this is from a translation called the passion translation and it says but whether i live or die is not important for i don't esteem my life as indispensable it's more important for me to fulfill my destiny and to finish the ministry my lord jesus has assigned to me which is to faithfully preach the wonderful news of god's grace so that says a lot there. Um, so we've got different journeys, Charlene. That's why I thought it would be great that we share it because we come from such different, different backgrounds in a way. But just how God designed our course and how, how it was sometimes tough. Mm. It's not always easy, isn't it, to find your destiny. Sometimes it's a real struggle. Mm. Um, so you're from, maybe you can explain your background a little bit to give some viewers an idea just where you're coming from. And maybe start the process for us on, on, on your journey there. Yes, where to start? Uh, I was born into a missionary family. My father was a pastor. And uh, uh, a few years later, when I was four years old, my mother and father joined John Watson. And they became the first official team of Vinesong. And my sister was two years old and we traveled throughout South Africa ministering. And uh, that's, I think the seed was planted in me mm. at that moment, you know. And uh, not just there, I mean, when you go right to the beginning in Jeremiah, when he, he said to Jeremiah, um, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. I love that scripture. Yeah. Um, it means that, you are born of God. You are not a product of your mother's womb. You are from above. Your surname is God's surname. You bear his DNA. Mm. And uh, Sorry, Shalane, just the end of Jeremiah 1, 5. Yeah, read it, it. It says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, as you said, before you were born. Before you were born, I set you apart. Yeah. I knew, so you felt I set it. apart, yeah, didn't you? Absolutely. Mm. And each one of us are set apart for a reason. Mm. I think many times, and, and I skip forward years later, always, always felt out of place. I never felt I fitted in any, anywhere. I, I hope whoever's watching f feels the same way as I did and could never find my place. I, I was very much uh, searching for a long time. Who am I? What is my purpose? I found out in high school that I could sing. My mother was an incredibly accomplished singer. And uh, here I was with this gift passed on to me, 
um, not as accomplished as she was, but for some reason I'm being used to sing in, in uh, shows and, and musicals and started to pursue that after school because I didn't think I had much between, uh, you know, my eyes, what do you say here, you between my ears. <laughs> <laughs> but Funny, you my do. mom's calling me right down on my phone. <laughs> Sorry, mom, I'll call you later. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's a sign. It's a sign. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Um, and so I decided to pursue singing, mm. but I was searching. I was really searching uh, who I am because you might have a gift, you might have a talent. And John always says, if you, you know, uh, your talent can't sustain you until it's washed in the blood of Jesus and becomes a gift to the body of Christ. Mm. And eventually I had to, I remember the moment very, very well. I said to the Lord, I was in such a deep depression, struggled with depression. I think a lot of people, young people these days struggling with depression and mental health. And uh, I know it's the enemy trying to steal away their purpose and destiny. I know it. Mm. Uh, it it really locks you in into a dark place and you feel lost, you feel mm -hmm. so lost. And Sean, yeah. just to say, uh, um, someone once said, um, before your biggest breakthrough will be your biggest trial. So sometimes if someone, you might be going through a trial and you really feel like, man, for me it was, I felt at one point the furthest away from where I should be. And that's the exact moment where the Lord called me into full-time ministry. So if, you, if you're going through stuff, sometimes you're going through something that was real. It's a spiritual battle, isn't it? Yeah. When you're going through that, you feel like you are fighting the darkness. Oh, so, my goodness. So if it's really heavy what you're going through, spiritually, if you really feel this is, this is stretching you beyond almost what you feel you can take. Yeah. You know, the Bible says he wouldn't, he wouldn't let you be there because he knows how much you can take. We won't be tempted beyond what we can bear, the Bible says. But um, so maybe that's you today. Maybe someone's at that place specifically. And most times that's when I think you have the call for ministry, right? When, it's, when you have that spiritual battle. I think so. I think if you are struggling with a spiritual battle, you be excited because nobody told me this, you see. I, I'm finding it out now. Be excited because there is a call on your life and the enemy knows it. And he is using all of hell's tools to try and deflect you from your calling. So if you stand up and say, uh, obviously there is a fight for my life. There's a tug of war. God is trying to pull me closer to him to tell me, who I am and what my purpose is and and the enemy is pulling me away mm -hmm. to try and say, no, no, uh, don't, don't find your purpose because uh, you probably have an incredible calling on your life. Everybody does. Mm -hmm. And that's where I was. Brennan Manning says, Jesus, does, he loves you for who you are and not for what you should be. He wants you to come to him broken, totally uh, purposeless, if there's a word like that. Uh, come to him as you are, with your anger, with your guilt, with your frustration, with your sin, with your everything. He wants you as you are because he uses five loaves and two fish to feed 5,000 men alone and not even knowing how many women and children were there. He uses the simple things of this world to confound the wise. Mm. If you feel simple, if you feel inadequate, the Lord can use you, mm. but you need to surrender to him and just say, here I am. Mm. I'm, I can't. And he wants you to get to that place yeah. where you are totally crying out for him. I was at a place where I was trying to commit suicide. <laughs> I was trying to commit suicide uh, and, oh my word, uh, I'm, I'm trying to think, should I share how I tried uh, because it was very futile, very stupid. Uh, I didn't really know what I was doing and I felt quite stupid lying there in the middle of winter in South Africa, outside, on the ground, trying to commit suicide, trying to cut myself with uh, barbed wire uh, and 
I, I really heard an audible voice saying, what are you doing? <laughs> Charlene, what are you doing? And I'm like, I don't know, it's burning. It's really painful. Oh, <laughs> and right there, I, I heard a voice to say, get up, get in the house and just chill. I really heard that, you mm. know, and that was an epiphany. I, 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 um, I, I remember it to this day. It's mm. like the Lord stood over me and said, what are you trying to do? <laughs> <laughs> and, oh. uh, wow, here I am. And I just celebrated 18 years. It was my Vine Song birthday a few, years, a few days ago. Mm. 18 years in Vine Song. The Lord called me out when I was 24 years old. I just turned 24. And here I am, married with a beautiful son, beautiful husband. Thank you. Praise and, uh, oh, the Lord can do amazing things, you know. I was just thinking about uh, uh, someone like um, Lauren Patton. I'm sure she wouldn't mind us telling the story. It's a friend of ours. He's, he's on our board of directors in the USA. And his, his youngest daughter really struggled. Uh, you know, she wasn't fitting in and she, things were not working out. And she tried jobs. She tried studies, different things. And then we visited them and we really had a word for her that God, you know, God's got something wonderfully, beautifully uh, special for her to do. And there's a great plan for her life. And then we all prayed for her. And then she was called, she's, she was called to YWAM. And uh, she did a DTS in Hawaii. And then the Lord took her for, mis for a mission trips where to the Philippines or India or somewhere. And uh, then her whole life changed. And, and she's, she's now so sold out. And the Lord gave her a husband as well. And um, so it's just amazing, you know, when you have that struggle that there's a reason for it. Yeah. Especially if it's if it's if you got that that kind of calling. Uh, what did you want to I share? I found it. Finally, found it. Mm -hmm. Ephesians three verse twenty, and I I love what it says in the Passion translation. Never doubt God's mighty power to work in you and accomplish all this. He will achieve infinitely more than your greatest request, your most unbelievable dream and exceed your wildest imagination. He will outdo them all, for his miraculous power constantly energizes you. Mm. Great, great scripture. Um, I'm going to share from Proverbs 16.3. It says, commit to the Lord whatever you do, and he will establish your plans. And for me, that's a big key turner there, because... Um, you know, I come from a, a background of uh, kind of real, I suppose, academics, if you will. Um, my, my dad was a was a professor. He was an international conference speaker in in educational psychology. My mom got a doctorate in, in music. She's a she's a great music astute music teacher, piano player. Um, you know, she does a lot musically. She's well respected. She was. Uh, doing TV programs, she did. She was on panels, judging people for different talent shows and things. And so, yes. So to grow up in that environment, and then uh, I have a very uh, accomplished brother and sister who are very clever in their own right. They have both got degrees. They they're excelling in their in their different pr uh, professions. And uh, so for me, <laughs> I, I had this not pressure, but I kind of had. You know, there were these. We had a wall in our home, and there was my father with his degree, and my mother was with her degree, and my brother with his degree, and my sister with her degree, and then there was this big gap in the middle. So I was like, "Okay, so <laughs> I've got some work to do here." I mean, it's part of my testimony how you know I was expelled from university. Um, just grew up really kind of rebellious and away from the Lord, and the Lord took me to a place where I was really alone, away from my city, and that's where He saved me. Um, I just came to my wit's end, mm. to a dead end street. I was literally shouting out to the Lord. I said, Lord, what do you want from me? I was banging my car window. I said, Lord, what do you want from me? What is this? What is, what's my purpose? And I also went through great darkness, uh, depression, suicide, hopelessness. My birthdays, I was, I went through the toughest times in my life on my birthdays. It's like, and then one day someone said to me, Satan despises the day that you're born. Hmm. And uh, so fighting through that, and then eventually, so the Lord saved me from there. And then I was going back to the same university where, where, I, where I was expelled from in the faculty that my dad was 
<laughs> the dean of. The dean of. And, uh, oh, man, this was a, a whole journey in itself. But then, you know, I finished my degree, praise the Lord, in educational psychology. I think I studied five different other things. It took me seven years to get, <laughs> to get my degree eventually. But praise the Lord. With third degree burns, maybe. <laughs> I think I can still smell all the burn. <clears throat> but um, I tell you, uh, it was just an exciting time, really, spiritually, because, you know, God was then reconstructing my whole life. You know, I had an amazing born-again experience. And that, from that moment on, it's like a cork that just turned. And every single aspect in my life just changed from that moment on. It was like a, a switch, literally from darkness. And wow. someone switched the lights on where I could see things. You know, I still went through hell. You know, you feel still like you're plowing through, but all of a sudden there's peace, there's help. Um, you have the body of Christ to lean on. I was grafted into the church that I was in with lovely pastors that I was under and, and walking the walk with me. Great, great dear brothers and sisters in Christ walking with me patiently. That's so much love and patience. Lord have mercy. I'm still praying for me to pass that on more and more. Um, but it was just an incredible journey. Um, but then eventually how the Lord uh, sent me to London and I didn't know what the Lord was doing. But during those times, I find the scripture to really, really help you along. Because when you give your plans to the Lord and when you commit what you do to Him, then He will direct you to your divine destiny. Two places where He shows you that divine fulfillment that you've been longing for. Um, and so for some people, you might be in your 70s and you think, I, I'm, I still haven't found it yet. Or you could be in your 50s or you can be in your 30s or 20s or you could be 10 years old watching us. It doesn't matter where you are, but there's a reason why you are where you are. But maybe our encouragement today is not to give up. I mean, not to give up, not to well, sit and think, well, this is just me. Maybe mm -hmm. I'm just designed to do this because some of us, not all of us are, are called to full time ministry. Some of us are called just to work and, and, and in our workplace be the missionary or, or to support ministry if God blesses us financially. Some of us are, are called full-time, some part-time, some, some within a secular environment. Um, so, so God's got just that special place. And I firmly believe, um, Charlene, that God, God does have a, a special plan and purpose like, like you do because through God... Uh, showing us our destinies, we actually found one another as well. Yeah. How the Lord, we both trusted the Lord for, for life partners. And that's another chapter as well, isn't it? Because not only is God, has God got a destiny for you, He's got a destiny for someone else with you. So if you're in His perfect will and plan, I believe He'll let you find that perfect person that will help fulfill and strengthen God's call. Because to be quite honest, Charlene, the Lord uses you to fulfill the destiny in my life. I can't do what I do without God using you in my life. Uh, you know, isn't it? We, it's just, they go together, don't they? Yeah. I just want to preface what I'm going to say with First Peter 1 verse 2, also here in the Passion Translation. It says, you are not forgotten, for you have been chosen and destined by Father God. The Holy Spirit has set you apart to be God's holy ones, obedient followers of Jesus Christ who have been gloriously sprinkled with his blood. May God's delightful grace and peace cascade over you many times over. It's that grace over your life. It's invisible, but it's there. And whether he's chosen a life partner for you to do it together or do it on your own, like Pastor John, who has chosen to um, be single all his life. And the Lord has used him mightily in buying song. He's never been married. And there is a special, very special purpose for each one. Mm. And he always says, don't put the cart in front of the horse. So I believe that's part of the journey that you take is to put God's plan in front first and to serve him first and um, first seek the kingdom mm. and everything else will be 
And I find when, when yeah, you... Yeah, that's a big scripture, that it's one. It's a big scripture. Yeah. We were created first seek, to be... First, yeah. first seek the kingdom. Yeah. And all things will be added. It doesn't say, well, you'll be partly fulfilled. It's like, boom, everything yeah. else comes, doesn't yeah. it? Seeking the kingdom is so big. I think that's a, a real kind of teaching on its own. What mm. is the kingdom of God? What are we seeking in his kingdom? But it's all to do with heaven and where we are ending up as and, and scratching around here on earth like the uh, analogy that uh, um, Reinhard Bonke spoke about the eagle scratching around in a chicken pen, mm. you know, um, or yeah, chicken yeah, run. Yeah, he said there's, there's, there's nothing worse seeing an eagle there you go. in a chicken run. Yeah. You know, we're, we're, we're designed to fly and into the fullness of what God has for us to fulfill our destinies and then sometimes we, you know, we feel almost pecking, you know, scratching around, Lord, what is it, what is it? But God will let you fly if you commit your works to Him. Um, can I read from Romans 8.27 that says, God, the searcher of the heart, knows fully your longings. Mm. Oh, sorry, our longings. Well, your longings, <laughs> my longings, our longings. Yet He also understands the desires of the Spirit because the Holy Spirit passionately pleads before God for us. His holy ones in perfect harmony with God's plan and our destiny. So God's destined us for greatness. He's destined us for a special purpose. I mean, isn't it incredible, Sean? When we look at nature, how diverse, you know, not two finger, not two feet, two people's fingerprints are the same. Um, not there's not the same shade of green, apparently. Uh, um, just everything is so uniquely designed. And the biggest lie that the enemy can tell you is, oh, well, you're just like this, or you're just the same as that, or, oh, well, yes, you, you kind of, yes, he'll help you, or there's just, yeah, you just have to do this, you'll just, you know, just go to church and you'll be all right. Yes, you know, these things are important. We have to be in fellowship, we have to read, pray, um, read the Word of God, be in fellowship, praise the Lord, worship the Lord, all things that we know we need to do to get, uh, to draw near to Him and to get close to Him. Um, but I believe someone's watching today and you've been really asking the Lord, Lord, I've been wondering about this purpose that you have for my life. And I pray that the Lord will show that purpose to you and draw you, draw you closer today. Um, and I think it's, it's not losing that hunger, isn't it? Not to give up. So don't give up. If you've, if you've been searching and nothing is happening, sometimes when you let it go, isn't it? Is when sometimes it can come your way. And God can reveal it to you. Um, did you want to add something? We have a grapevine in our garden that I, I received for a birthday present um, a few years ago. And last summer I was busy trimming it back and I got such a revelation about him being the vine, Jesus being the vine, and, and we are the branches. And when you don't... I realized that those branches who are just growing um, and they're not producing the grapes, I need to cut them back because all the juice flowing through the vine into the branches should go straight into the grapes. And if you cut back the long branch right to just before the grape, all the juice that's been flowing through to those branches will go straight into the fruit. And I realized that's why he trims us and prunes us is because we are bearing fruit. And when you feel you've been trimmed, 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 trimmed all the time <laughs> and it hurts, there's really a reason for it because those are our growing times. James 1 says do not uh, despise the difficult times, call them, yeah. what, what is the word? I'm well, always bad with Welcome them as friends. Welcome them as friends. Trials, you know, there you go. Don't trials. treat them as enemy. Right, yeah. trials. As enemies. And then I realized when you bear fruit, it's pleasing to the consumer, to the eater. Mm -hmm. But then he wants you to go further because maybe you're not destined to be just to bear fruit. You're destined to make wine. And wine goes through fermenting process. You've got to trample on those grapes. If you felt you've been trampled on, mm. God is about to bring forth 
a wonderful wine um, and that that is intoxicating to the soul and it's got nothing to do with drinking wine because it's got an analogy of the Holy Spirit that is coming forth to intoxicate you with his glorious presence. But if we go further than that, those who feel trampled, but then you go further and you get grapeseed oil from the oil from the seed of the grape. And if you feel not only cut down, bearing your fruit, trampled, trampled on, yeah. and bearing that wine and fermenting and waiting. Fermentation is a long process mm. we learned at school. It takes long. You feel you're on, you're on the shelf. You're waiting. It's a terrible experience. I remember just waiting and waiting and waiting. I was at home for so long. I had this thing in me that was saying, there's more to me. I know there's more to me. And yet there was a waiting period and I know it was a fermenting period. And then that wonderful wine, and you know the most expensive wines are the ones that have been, are years and years and years old. They've been sitting on that rack for years. You know, if someone brings out a, you know, I don't, I don't know all, so much about wine, but it's I know that they pay a lot of money for one that's, you know, you know, a lot of years old. Then it's not just the waiting period, it's then the crushing comes. And it's the crushing of that grape seed that produces oil. And that's the anointing. Mm. And I realized after all the trimming, after all the trampling, after all the fermenting, after all the waiting, comes the crushing. But then the anointing, the anointing flows. Mm. And I want to encourage you, endure. God says, I will be there with you all your days. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. He's watching over you. The Holy Spirit is your comforter. He's your advocate. He's your intercessor. He's right there. And you've been chosen for such a time as this. And you've, you've felt you've been waiting. But the Lord is allowing that anointing to pour forth in these last days. There's a big revival coming. God wants to use your life. And he's going to use the ones that have felt the most insignificant, that have felt the most unwanted, that have felt the most hopeless. Maybe down and out. Yeah. Down and out. Mm. There's a wonderful, wonderful book by Brennan Manning that I've just ordered, Ragamuffin Gospel. I'm going to read it, boy. I pray you can read it too with me. And he's got an incredible life story. I felt that in my life, you know. I felt that I was cast aside. I was rejected. I was so struggling from rejection, pleasing people, feeling I needed to be accepted so badly. I never felt that God was real. I was groping in the dark. I was like, be real to me, I would shout out. I, I, I went through real tough times. And in my waiting, in my everything, that whole process I explained, I see now when we are worshiping the beauty of his holiness, that dripping of the oil, you know, when, when your skin is oily, nothing can grip onto you. Mm. The enemy cannot grip onto you. He just slides off. So stick it out. Stick it out because that crushing is going to mean an anointing like you've never experienced it before. So now I, I'm in a place where I just say, bring it on, Lord. It's, I know you're with me. Bring it on. It's tough. But I know it's going to bring an anointing that will flow, that will change and bring healing to many. Mm. Thanks, Charlene. Uh, before we pray, I've got one more uh, scripture just to share um, from Luke 10 verse 4. And it says, you won't, need any, you won't need to take, sorry, anything with you. Trust in God alone. And don't get distracted from my purpose by anyone you might meet along the way. 
I think part of this process that you're talking about is being around the right people. Yes, Dan. For so many people, things are not working out. Maybe you're a businessman or, or you're doing stuff and it doesn't work out. You know, we read that scripture about committing your works to the Lord and then things will, God will, you can meet your destiny, but you need to commit those works to the Lord in prayer because people around you can distract you from your destiny. So that's maybe a warning for someone. Make sure you surround yourself with people who are God-fearing. Make sure the input that you're getting into your life, especially when it comes to decision-making, you know, choices, moving from place to place, changing jobs. Um, very important that we, that we search the Lord, number one, but make sure there's no one next to you that can distract you. Sometimes things don't work out for a reason. Many times some of my jobs have not worked out and I... You know, the, the, the temptation for, for me was to strive because things are not working out. So that, that means now I must really up my game and I must now overproduce. Now I must, I must work several jobs to keep this standard of living or to, or, you know, I think sometimes when you commit things to the Lord, sometimes it will not work out because He's busy opening another door. He's busy changing direction in your life. So some of us might have done something our whole lives. We, and you just think, Lord, I'm... I'm I'm ready for something else. I'm, I'm ready for you to, to, to bring that fulfillment. So just be ready. And, and, and if God changes or, or makes something not work out or there's a, something that might be a little uncomfortable, maybe they're at the, this place of this, of this pressing that you're talking about, going through a process. Um, but it does not last forever. And the Lord has got, if you put your trust in Him, if He's got a plan for that, there's a reason, there's a purpose. And I bet you, you ride right around the corner from him opening that door that you've been praying for. So we're going to close in prayer now as we agree with you um, to find your destiny. I'm going to let Charlene just uh, say a prayer and then I'll, I'll go after that. So if you can start us off, Charlene. Yes. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We welcome you right now. You are our comforter who came when Jesus left this earth. We are in the dispensation of the Holy Spirit and we welcome you now. And wherever you are, I pray that you will just open your hands and receive. The Holy Spirit is about to touch you and bring you that peace that you've been longing for. Holy Spirit, thank you for your anointing that is flowing right now, bringing healing, and change and hope. Thank you, Father, that you say in Ephesians 1 verse 18, I pray that the light of God will illuminate the eyes of your imagination, flooding you with light until you experience the full revelation of the hope of His calling. That is the wealth of God's glorious inheritances that He finds in us, the Holy Ones. And according to Your Word, we receive this inheritance You speak of, Father, that is ours to cling to. Satan, we break Your power today. Every lie of the enemy spoken over the elect, the chosen, the righteous in these last days where the enemy has brought calamity destruction, confusion. We break your power in the name of Jesus. We set ourselves free from condemnation in the name of Jesus. And we receive the hope that is Christ Jesus in us, the hope of glory. Thank you, Father, that we will see the light of your presence all around us as we walk in this day, knowing that we are redeemed by the blood of Jesus and we are set apart for such a time as this and that our destiny belongs to Jesus and the world falls away and the glory of heaven that is awaits us and the coming of Jesus and the love of God the Father that will compel us to endure. 
be our hope in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Thank you, Lord, just for your anointing today. I pray for anyone that's been discouraged, that that discouragement would leave in Jesus' name. And that our destinies, Lord, as Charlene prayed, we just commit it afresh into your hands. And I pray that you'll give us continued courage, determination to keep on seeking for what you have for us and for your perfect will so that we'll see you in heaven one day and you can say, well done, good and faithful servant. And you have fulfilled that which I have planned for you. So Lord, we thank you for your presence. We give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I have just one wonderful thing that I want to read to you, our listener or our watcher, that this trial is refining you. This test is maturing you. This valley is preparing you. This delay is discipling you. And God is working for you. Oh, Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's quite an ending right there. That's the icing on the cake. That's not my <laughs> words, Dad. <laughs> I found that. That really that blessed so me. <laughs> praise the Lord. Who's that from? Is it just anonymous? I don't know if it's anonymous. Well, praise the Lord. So God bless you. Thank you for watching. See you again on Friday p.m. It's, it's the, the place, place to be. <laughs> Bye.